Yeah. Well, I think I think we're we're just welcoming people in, and uh, we've uh, we've been playing for a couple of weeks. We missed out last week, as you know, and we have a confession to make. Awful. We forgot to go and clap for the NHS last Thursday. Dreadful. Anyway, we went and clapped extra loud tonight, and uh, two hand clapping this week. Yeah, 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 jumping and screaming and whistling and things like that. But um, we've we've been up to all sorts, and as usual, it's been great to get your emails and messages yeah, it's been great. into Campac Three to find just, out what you're you're up to. Just before you get into what they're up to, um, I'll just for anyone who's new here, and uh, maybe one or two, this is basically a conversation based around the themes of this book that we produced recently. Uh, it's called Act Three, The Art of Growing Older. And I think it, it is an art. And today we will delve a bit more, I think, into some of the art that people are finding in ways to grow old gracefully and- um, Disgracefully. Pleasurefully, disgracefully. So we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute, so. Absolutely. Uh, yes, so we're going to help you die without regrets. That's the main aim, and uh, we will be playing with that idea tonight. So I hope we're not going to die during this call. Uh, no, I won't. How do I know? You might. You're older than me by a long way. Well, I'm going to be <laughs> 65 in two days' time. Yes, so, Adrian's yeah, having I'm a birthday, have a birthday on so. Saturday, a lockdown birthday. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we had some lovely messages in. Just a couple of examples. Um, Graham wrote in, who's 73, and he said that after our last session on health, uh, he's been walking, running, cycling, and for the first time got out there and played lockdown tennis. And then other things that kept him moving was uh, gardening, planting out tomato plants grown from seed, actually, which I've tried. I've, ne impressive. I've never done seed growing before, and it's it's. Uh, it's slightly obsessive. There seems to be a lot of seeds and, and planting going on in our street this this year for some reason. Th that's true. And then um, Peter, of... who is on the call tonight, I'm sure, who's 87. I hope you don't mind me saying your age, Peter. He wrote to say he cycles 30 miles every day. Uh, he also does the Guardian crossword and code word. He has a very healthy diet and he enjoys every day with Patricia, his wife. So that's good. Um, and he said he's a couple of kilos lighter than at the start of lockdown. And I had a chat with Vera, who is a friend in our street, and she said she took uh, Professor Richard Vincent's advice to uh, concentrate on what is green. And she's been walking in the greenness in the last week or mm. two and enjoying that. And I will have also been cycling in it. It is just brilliant out there because uh, the green um, from memory is the opposite of the red, which is the color of the back of your eyeball. So it's a, a restive color and good for stress and anxiety. And a lot of us are a bit anxious at the moment, unsurprisingly. And, um, and also Kim says, my favorite form of play is usually non-conventional in the sense that I am really not very fond of board or card games, me too, um, but love to be creative with others. Being a bit of a wordsmith, I'm fond of banter and wordplay and actively collaborating on storytelling and acting also feels like play. So play is different for different people, isn't it, really? Yeah, you like to play Scrabble. Yeah, nobody plays with me. I play on my own with two racks and then just turn the board round. Yeah, it's a bit sad, the, isn't it? Those are the best kind <laughs> of games, I think. Okay, so what are we, we going to do tonight? Well, in our tree, Tilly, if you just want to show the tree... Um, which is the kind of theme of our book. Um, we uh, have listed their home, money, work, play, friends, world, and special, which is, are the things we kind of get up to in our lives. And we did a little poll uh, two weeks ago, and play was your favorite thing to talk about today. And um, all of this is about having a healthy and satisfying life, as Judy says, to live life without regret. And... To help us with that tonight, we've got two guests, Kate Willett and Steve Nation, and they're going to tell us about how they play and what play means to them. So that's going to be great. So we're going to, we're going to do that in a minute. And, but Tilly will just give us a little bit of housekeeping, first of all, before we move into that. Good so. evening, everyone. Welcome to week nine of lockdown. Uh, so let's see some waves and smiles on the cameras. Nice to see you all. So as usual, we'll keep you everyone muted um, whilst uh, the body of the the majority of the session takes part uh, takes place and then there will be time for Q&A at the end. Um, now I want to introduce the feature of raise hand. I'm sure lots of people know what that means but to virtually raise your hand you click down at the bottom of your screen there's a toolbar and it will say participants. If you click on that there should be a little icon that says raise hand 
Um, so I can see Adrian and Judy have raised their hand. Um, yeah, Lucinda Sparrow, Steve Nation, thank you, thank you. Um, so we'll use that if you want to contribute or ask a question later, you can raise your hand um, and, and that means I know I can come to you and unmute you and you can join in that way. Uh, but we also have the chat uh, and people have been contributing to the chat already. So please do carry on there um, and comments, questions, thoughts, Jokes, it is the play week after all. Um, and just finally, an update, a last minute update from Peter's wife, Patricia, who says Peter's on his way, but he does indeed cycle 200 miles a week. So, um, so he's just that's a last minute update, yes. Um, cool. And just the last thing is that this is being recorded. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so um, although we're having a lot of fun with this and it's a laugh, and we will be underlining um, enjoying ourselves tonight. Uh, we always have to remember that there are many, many people that we know and you know who are not having a great time with coronavirus um, and the situation it's thrown across the whole world in terms of work anxiety, missing people and uh, illness and death too. So as we always do, we light the candle to remember that life is difficult and hard and we miss those we love as well. And this is for them. I'm remembering my friend Dave, who I've known for 40 something, five years. He was his birthday yesterday in Brisbane, but he also buried his mother yesterday, which is, you know, what a, what a thing to be doing on your birthday. Um, yeah, he was 69 yesterday. Um, so happy birthday, Dave. Um, and yeah. also we just remind you again to look after yourself uh, as we go through the content tonight. It will be fun and interesting, but also we are very aware that for many people, um, they don't find play or letting go or having a good fun time okay. Perhaps they have a loud message in their heads from childhood maybe that you're not allowed to play, that's wasting time or showing off or just not doing anything productive. So um, if this does bring up some, some painful feelings as well, you know, we would encourage you to, to be honest and real with yourself and look after yourself and you know, don't do anything too ambitious straight after this tonight. And if you need to get in touch with us to help process any of the material we work with on any of these calls, please, yeah. please do. Tilly, can we have this slide with Mr. George Bernard Shaw, who said, we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. And this is a picture of him in, on a Cape Town beach. He was 75 when he was, this photograph was taken. He was the first time he'd ever been surfing. And uh, I thought that's just a great picture. We wanted to have that in our book, but um, for some reason we were denied it, probably for copyright reasons, but uh, yeah. So, so how do we actually define play? We're going to, we're going to just, you know, grab onto a definition. Um, Dr. Stuart Brown, there's an institute in America called the National Institute for Play, and his definition- Only in America. Yeah, might, you might have spotted it in the book. He said, it is the engagement in the act that matters, the escape from time, the outcome is less important. So his theory is it's the process is way more interesting and important to engage in than the actual result. Now, some of you may be very fixated on, well, if I want, if play is baking for me, I really need a beautifully baked cake. But actually, a lot of the enjoyment comes from weighing and measuring and mixing and licking the spoon. Yeah. But with baking, there's, there is always a kind of a definite outcome and a, possibly a sense of failure or, or success, isn't there, mm, with, yeah. with baking. But yeah. with some other things, you just do them. And it's a different kind of process. Uh, and one of the words that we like, which you, I'm sure will come across this idea of flow, where you are in a place where time stands still and actually um, you're not thinking about other stuff and you're in a different kind of place. Well, that is a place I would suggest where play is happening. 100% mm, absorbed really. Yeah, yeah. And some people think of this as hobbies and that can certainly come under the overall banner of play uh, but it doesn't have to be called a hobby um, and I think I think don't get into too many knots about is this a hobby or is this what I do with my spare time hobby is a very old-fashioned word isn't it it is yeah I, mean, I don't even know that shop, I would use that there's word there's a shop called hobby craft yes that's quite fun yeah um, <laughs> you know and we know that play is what children do and they, they naturally uh, learn and they build their brains through that but for some strange reason, and the book that you mentioned by um, Stuart Brown uh, does go into this quite a lot, 
is that why is it that a lot of adults actually stop playing? Um, as you said earlier, there's some sort of shoulding voice in, the, in them or from maybe their parents. And you might know, you know in your, from your parenting experience, how maybe parents, some, quite a lot of parents, shut down their kids from play because they're anxious about, mm, there should, about their child. Is that there, right? There should be, there's, there's something about um, being absolutely free to just enjoy it and not for any other sake than that. It's not about achievement or reaching grade eight on an, an instrument or anything along those lines. Those, those are good things that can help you personally achieve something, but we're talking about being completely absorbed and just for the sake of it, rather than any sort of major a aims or goals that you're trying to hit. And, and things like playing for, like, you know, playing for, let's say, music, there's a difference between playing for pleasure and playing to earn money and um, do other people's agendas. Uh, or it could be play, could be something passive, like, um, like fishing or um, watching a film or a or play or that kind of thing. So there's, there's a, it does cover a huge, and we're not really defining it very, we don't want to define it very clearly here because I think play is what you mm. want it to be. So we're kind of trying to throw the net wide to allow you to imagine, hmm, maybe I'd like to play like this. Yep, yes. If you could start again and yeah. just see play differently tonight, this is your, your opportunity perhaps to do that. Can I just say, I think fishing is active, even if it's a bit sluggish and slow, because you're taking part in it, aren't you? Yeah. I Whereas if is. you're an observer, like at the theatre or the cinema, yeah, or you're sitting yeah. at home listening to music. Yeah. Um, but if it, all of those things, any of them, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what it is. And, and this is so not a competitive thing. Um, it's, it's what works for you. Um, and, uh, I can remember as a child that we would play family games of Monopoly and I was too young to really understand how to do it. So I would just get into a strut and leave. And then I became known in the family as the one that would never stay with a board game. And, uh, and it was only cause I was a bit young and didn't get it. But now who loves board games? Me. Yeah. So you can change, you know, and, and, and why is play important in act three? And, um, you know, well, we've got generalizing, we've got more time and space in act three. If you have a family, maybe that those commitments are less and um, maybe career is diminishing. And so you've got more time. Of course, that can create a negative vacuum that can become very, very destructive if you don't use that time effectively. So that's something to be careful about. And we also know that one of, the, one of the things that we've got to watch out for in Act 3 as well is if we get too cut off from communities and uh, anything to do with play can help build your networks and engage you with your communities where you are through joining classes of some sort that help you play and enjoy yourself. We know somebody who's taken up village line dancing um, and her husband's not interested at all, but she loves it. Um, there was a wonderful uh, Channel 4 documentary recently about a bunch of small kids who were put together with a bunch of people in an old mm. people's home. And they discovered, or uh, well, demonstrated, this wonderful word, juvenescence, which is kind of benefiting from exposure to young people. It's, it's multi-generational yeah. communities. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Access it works that, yeah. both ways. So yeah. juvenescence is a word which um, I rather love because it, it, it has a kind of it sounds like effervescence as well, you know, which is yeah. nice and bubbly yeah, uh, it's, and it's young bubbles. Uh, I, that's what I'm seeing when I read that word. Yeah. Yeah. Hang around with people of all ages. And Big it's tip. hugely important for building, um, as we said earlier, play builds children's brains. It builds neural pathways by solving problems like puzzles and word games and all that kind of thing. It actually builds uh, neural networks. So, uh, or helps your brain, stop unbuilding itself as well as we all know so so doing doing code words and crosswords things like that um some people find that really engaging and they they can't be interrupted while they're doing it so that you know it, it's doing several things it's building these pathways but it also would be an opportunity to play um, and doing a jigsaw puzzle as well um yeah. that's a nice thing to have lying around especially now in, in lockdown there's there's free ones on our street if anybody's missing one so we do some playing together but we also do <laughs> some say. playing apart. Uh, I mean, Judy doesn't cycle in the same way that I cycle. Uh, you do other things. Yeah, I, I, um, I sing once a week with a, with a fantastic singing teacher who's also a very dear friend. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got my glittery top on because I realised that I just love dancing to mindless 80s disco. 
uh, I just love it. And that's me. Again, I, 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 I have no idea what time it is. I just, just keep, keep them coming, keep the tracks coming, and I will be lost in music. We went to a wonderful gig with Bev and Errol uh, a couple of years ago where we went to see Chic, and that was just probably one of the best gigs I've ever been to. It was just, um, just fabulous, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, play takes work. Um, Sorry. Mad game we've been playing in our house. In, 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 if you look on YouTube and look up Robert Waldinger's Harvard Happiness Study, uh, it's a wonderful YouTube video, a TED Talk. Um, he says the people in our 75 year study who were the happiest in retirement had worked to replace workmates with new playmates. And I think, I think blokes are particularly rubbish at this often in corporate environments because they make their social networks with the people they work with mm. and then wonder why when they've left and retired, they've got no mates. Mm. Uh, they didn't have real mates, maybe. Mm. Uh, if they were, they would have kept in touch. Mm. So, and they didn't kind of figure or you know, think about that stuff. Mm. Um, mm. I've got friends who have been in that situation and wondered why no one wants to be in touch with them anymore. Mm. Well, go figure. You know, yeah. it's, it's something to work on, basically, before you hit the retirement mm. thing. So, I'm going to introduce the lovely Kate Willett. Um, uh, are you there, Kate? There you are. You're going to unmute yourself. I'm just unmuting. Oh, there you are. There you are. Lovely. Resplendent in white. Uh, Kate is a therapist for children, uh, young people and adults. Uh, you're a celebrant and a magistrate in the family court. That sounds pretty grown up. Um, do you have any time for playing, Kate? I always make time for playing. Um... I think it's incredibly important. I think that it's actually, it's something you need to be disciplined about doing, which sounds kind of, it doesn't sound like that fits together, but actually, unless you choose to make the time for it, you won't, you won't have it in your life and you'll miss yeah. out usually. Yeah. So what's your story of play um, and how did that come about? Okay. So my story of play is I was, uh, in Australia, uh, I'd, I'd always loved art, but left school and didn't really do much. And I was in Australia with three young children and no family around. And uh, I was very fortunate that my lovely husband said, okay, uh, I can make sure that you have a, a morning a week off, a way to do whatever you want to do. And then it's quite hard to think, what do I want to do with that time? I knew I didn't want to go shopping. I didn't want to do that something. I wanted something structured that was for me. So I went off to an art class and I did life drawing. And it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It was three hours a week where I could have you know, been anywhere. If someone had said to me, what are the ages, what are the names of your children? I'd have been a kind of like, oh, I can get back to you on that. So you really were in flow. Absolutely. And it was wonderful because it was very affirming and non-judging. Yeah. And I knew for me, that was really, really important. What, what, what do you mean by that? The, why was that important to you? Um, because I think I can be pretty judging of myself. Oh, okay. And I probably would take other people's judgment very seriously. Yeah. And I didn't need that. All I needed was to be in that experience and to enjoy it for myself. That wow. was really, I didn't need to improve even. I mean, it's nice if you do, but that yeah. wasn't what it was about. And actually, I remember as a very little girl of about eight or nine, uh, walking home from my primary school. We lived in a village and I had to walk down this footpath home. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, good, today is Tuesday and mum will be in a good mood because oh. on Tuesday she does yoga. Yeah. Wow. And so as a child, I knew. You were tuning play, in. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really lovely and good. And I hope I've kind of carried that and want to encourage that in my, my own children. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So... Is there a situation sometimes where it's hard for you to carry on playing? Yes, I think that um, our society kind of doesn't really value play. And I think particularly for women, it's hard to give ourselves permission to play. I think there's an old tradition that men work very hard and therefore are entitled to play. 
um, such as play golf on the weekends. And whereas women, certainly those who are prim the primary carers, often it's considered that's not as hard work yeah. and therefore it's not acceptable to make play such a major part of your lives. Yeah. And I think it's a hugely important part to have in your life all the way through. Yeah. There's no society in the world where play isn't actually part of it. So it's obviously a deep human need. It is, yeah. And it, I mean, it could be argued that women who are the primary carers or whoever the primary carer is, needs it play more than the other person who goes out to work. Yeah, because don't get the same space. Um, yeah, so I think that's really important. And I think growth comes from play. Tell um, me more. Well, I think that it is, you, you are learning about yourself in play often. I mean, we encourage that, as you said, in small children, we think of yeah. learning through play, but somehow when you become adolescent, that becomes not so acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Just in finishing, have you, is there something that you've learned about yourself that you want to share or? Uh, yes, I suppose that it's, um, I come back to the rest of my life better for it. I mean, you, you named the roles I have as a psychotherapist, as yeah. a family court magistrate, they can be pretty heavy and I can feel very responsible in them, really wanting to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. So to have a place where you are in flow, it's not about being good. It's just about being. Being. Mm. That's really helpful for me. Mm. Mm. And mm. if you couldn't do art, Kate, do you have, uh, or painting? Yes. Do you have a sense of what you might do? If you oh, that's interesting. That's... I think being in greenery is very important to me. I mean, I do a lot of walking in greenery and I think as long as I can keep surrounded by some greenery and, and that feels playful to me to be out there in the space. And there's something about the rhythm of walking that I feel I often do my best thinking or being in that space. Mm, beautiful. And also it's free, isn't it? Uh, that anyone could just, if yeah. most people can just walk out the door. Mm. Um, and uh, what I love about what you say about the art class as well is that this has been with you for a long time. Yeah. And it's, it's not something that for you means that you want to put an exhibition on or invite all your friends in to look at your work or anything. It isn't about, about, that. about yeah. that in the way yeah. that some of the other art outlets are like that, you know, people who are painting, drawing, making records or... Um, and, you know, everyone's got an, uh, you know, a, a podcast or a Zoom thing or a, or a blog or a yeah. website yeah. or a book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're But right. it's, yeah. It's, it's really lovely that it is just for you. And, uh, you know, those of us that write, we want other people to read our work. Um, but not always, you know, sometimes a diarist is only doing it just for them. For them. Yeah. Um, and it's not at all about a standard of some sort. I think that's quite important to have a place like that because, I mean, you know, also I think that's something maybe slightly comforting about Act 3. You yeah. know, most of us have come to the realisation that we're not going to win Wimbledon or <laughs> become Picasso yeah. or any of those things, but that doesn't mean playing yeah. isn't yeah. joyful just for itself. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it, you mentioned that your mum did yoga. Did, did she carry on playing through her older years once you'd grown up, left home, all of that? Sadly, no. Oh. And that's probably why I remember that so clearly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. your model of her in Act 3 doesn't include this sort no. of thing? Yeah. No, I think she, she was very good at judging herself. She is, she's still alive. But, yeah. um, and I think that uh, also I think there was a, a part of her that that felt it was wrong just doing play. It was in too indulgent. You had yeah. to produce something. Yes. Yeah. And she, there was something very competitive as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the, the Protestant work ethic thing is a, is a problem. Mm. Thanks, Kate, okay, very lovely, much. thank you. Stay on the line. We're gonna get Steve in now. So Tilly, if you can bring Steve Nation in. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. Hi. So some of you will know Steve and, uh, um, now, when we had a chat earlier in the week, the one thing that jumped out for me, Steve, was that you nearly got signed for Manchester United when you were a teenager. Potentially, um, yes. Yeah, potentially. And that you met Matt Busby, who a lot of football fans will, will know the name. Not that I'm a football fan, but 
you know, Matt Busby, eh? But, um, but then, you know, throughout your working life, you were troubleshooting in the print industry as well. So, um, Steve, uh, how old are you and what are you up to these days? Um, well, I'm 73, 74 in a few months' time. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do? What do I do? Uh, play. For play. Well, I, I do a lot of cycling these days. And in fact, there is a, a fellow cyclist on the on the, the this I can't see him at the moment but Peter is here and Peter he mentioned earlier is one of the reasons I'm I'm out and about on a regular basis because um when I was looking towards uh, I would say coming out of the industry I, it was before my retirement things were changing quite rapidly and I was unhappy with the culture that had taken over the business that I was in so I came out and sort of worked for myself and looked looked at various opportunities for volunteering but in the meantime because I had more control of my time I wanted to I decided as I'd always been a, into sport I couldn't sort of play football at a sort of reasonable level anymore I couldn't do further side I, I'd had to give up squash for knee injuries so I took up cycling again and uh, I, I started to discover the Cambridgeshire a Suffolk and Hertfordshire countryside because in my work I'd always been traveling in UK, Europe and Scandinavia so the weekends when I was at home was spent with the family, uh, three, three grown-up children. So yes I started uh, cycling on my own but then Peter's group one day sort of breezed past me as I was coming home one day and uh, invited me into the group and since then I've been cycling with the with the groups on a regular basis and it's not just the physical activity it's a very much a social group we're an eclectic bunch of um, people some retired some semi-retired some independent means but it's it's given me uh, as, as you were saying earlier uh, Adrian about work you, you have you have colleagues and friends at work but when you finish that particularly in my career because although I live in Cambridge, I was never actually working in Cambridge. So when I stopped, I, di I didn't have that sort of group of work friends around me. So I've created, you know, I've got a new group of friends in, in my sort of later years and, and I'm really enjoying the variety, the company, and of course the physical exercise is, uh, is fantastic. Mm, that's brilliant. And what what have you um, gained from it during lockdown at the moment, where you can't cycle with the group? Well, well that's that's the, one of the disappointments. Is obviously we're not being able to go out as a group. But I, I, I'm an early bird, so I I get up and I'm out normally eight o'clock in the morning for two to three hours, and it's just amazing. It's just fantastic to be out with no traffic on the roads. You know, you hear that I get up for the dawn chorus, and you, the air is clean, the, the roads are free. And I was talking to somebody the other day. It reminded me. It reminds me of when I was a, a young teenager, doing a paper round on my bike. Because back in the early sixties, there wasn't a volume of traffic, mm. and you were up and about very early with nobody else on the road. And you, you had time to yourself, mm. and yeah, it has reminded me of those times. Yes. Also, the, the cycling alone does help with if what I call my quiet time, my reflection time and sort of, you know, my, my spiritual side because I, I'm a nature boy. I love it. I, I worked in the Lake District. I lived in the Lake District and sort of got to love walking up there. But uh, yeah, it's it's different. And, we, you know, I've adapted to the to, to doing it, I'm, it helps me organise my week because I'm out and about till the mid morning and then I'm back and I'm, I'm also involved in, although I'm not employed, I'm, I'm a volunteer advisor for a debt advice charity, a trustee of that charity and also a pension fund trustee, which is a, an interesting time at the moment. So, you know, I'm, I have a portfolio of things yeah, you don't, active. You don't sound very idle, uh, uh, Steve. <laughs> I haven't got time to be idle, Adrian. No, no. <laughs> so I think what's what's interesting is that you you gear your day around having your play first, and it yes. sets you up. Whereas I think many of us grew up that 
with the idea that you, you have to do all your work first and then you're allowed some play time. Um, and I think it's, it's, you've found a way to make it really work for you. Uh, and it's, it's about cycling, it's about being out in nature. But it's also, if that's how you start your day, you're going to be so much more better for yourself and everybody you encounter. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, I, I've never, never sort of um, got to, into the gym culture because me, the gym is the outside. You know, yeah. that, you know, that's my gym and that's what I do. And if I start the day with a couple of hours of, of physical activity and sort of quiet and you know sort of mental well-being I can then work through the rest of the day and and enjoy the rest of the day enjoy what I do Love rather that. than think I've got to do these tasks and therefore at the end of it I make I can then go out to play no I do my play first yeah yes. uh, I'm guessing yeah. we don't need to go into it now but if, if you're if you're advising people on debt issues right now is um is a pretty stressful time for people. Yes, it is. Yeah, obviously we can't uh, meet with clients and a lot of the clients won't have the uh, access to technology because, uh, you know, because of their situation. So it is, it, is, it is difficult and we're, we're trying to keep in touch with the clients we have, but uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. Mm. Oh, Thanks, well, thank, thank you, Steve. Stay with us. If you hear the odd bark, it's our dog who's... <laughs> He's, he's, a, he's a puppy, really, yes. So um, what we're going to do now is something we haven't done before, but I bet lots of you have we're done it on play. other Zooms. We're going to play. And um, we're going to uh, divide you up into little groups. Um, so you'll get a, you'll, it'll all come on the screen and you'll be, you'll be put into groups of three, something like that, just for a few minutes. And just to consider what are you doing for play and what it does for you. So just like Steve and Kate have been telling us how important it is, um, be lovely to put you into some groups and we will pop in and out of your groups just to hear how you're getting on. Um, so, the, so the questions are, what are you doing and what is it doing for you? And then the last question would be, um, what would you love to be doing? Yeah, if you've, if you've if been, you, oh, if only. If you're missing out yeah. on something, what, what's your dream play in Act 3? Mm. And um, are we going to report back? Uh, if we have time, yes, okay. and then we'll 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 merge into the Q and A session at that part of the session anyway. So, it's, so it might all just be part of the same thing. So Tilly, do your magic with the with the knobs and the the levers that you've got at your disposal. Uh, Tilly's the great director in the sky somewhere, in another part of the house. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So just click the breakout room button.
You should be unmuted now. Here we are. Yep, we're back. Whoops, we were we were catapulted into different groups. Uh, and yes. that was quite an adventure. Yeah, we've been so so. It was quite playful. We we didn't have a chance to say to to, Kate, to, to uh, Mariel and Tim, we're going now. We just suddenly <laughs> we were we babooced. were we were yes well, accelerated it, out. It it was uh, it was really interesting to have a little go at listening in to what um what we what. Is going on for you in terms of playing and um, uh, in in the first group we visited Tim was saying how busy he is and how difficult it is to actually get out um, and, uh, and and then disrupt the working day it's sort of worse at home. So I can see Tim has got his dog on his oh, lap. Yes, now, there's Alfie. Tim would you say that's a bit of play there? You're muted at the moment. Yeah, um, dog uh, walking uh, which I don't do enough of, and um, training dogs, which I don't do enough of, which would probably be uh, considered a, a really good thing to do. Um, but yeah, he is a he is a relief. Yeah. Um, but also uh, in the current in the current um, situation, uh, probably you know a, a, a really a good thing to have around to make me break away from work. Um, yeah. Which I don't. Everyone else would be bored hearing about that, but yeah, he is. He's good. Well, you were good. telling us earlier that you're, yeah. you're with your line of work. You're basically on Zooms all day, every day. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. From home, and and that's yeah, and that's that's remarkably stressful and 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 wearing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it can be. It's it's, it's really quite. Um, I mean, I would quite like the, the change back into an office environment if I can get back into it. Yeah, but I like I've liked aspects of this. Yeah, as well. Probably never have to wear a suit again. That's one of the good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's hoping that there are some things that we'll take back into that other world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, has anybody, has anyone got some comments as well? Um, questions. We're going to throw it open to all of you. Um, if anybody wants to ask or join in or has got a reflection, don't uh, forget to raise your hand uh, yeah. virtually, of course. Yeah. Somebody's got a hobby craft loyalty card. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit keen. Yes. Okay. Um, I think uh, we've got two raised hands. Uh, Stephen Rowe. I'm going to come to you. You're unmuted, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Hi. I, was, I was deeply shocked when I saw this page. Oh, yes. Oh, we didn't Because... Sorry, I'll hold yeah, it up again. Yes, yes. Word, yeah. yeah. Yes. Anyway, the, the, the point is that in the male group, dancing didn't feature at all. Oh, that was a major omission, Steve. I'm sorry. A major omission. <laughs> but um, That's before we met you. <laughs> um, there. Yeah, there we are. It's really interesting that actually. Well, look, look um, I have to say, just as a um, to cover <laughs> our asses, um, this was just a very last minute sort of e email around various friends so it's not it's nothing scientific there. no I, 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 please, yeah, please I, carry on sorry you were going to say i was just going to add though that we did for those of you who haven't read the book is the uh the the wordle in the red boundary that was we only asked women and then we only asked men so these are female answers in the red boundary if that if that's of interest but not really representative of the of the genders mm -hmm. as a whole but sorry Stephen, you're going to say no, I, I actually, I, I actually found that very interesting, um, because it's true that in the, in the sort of, uh, w amongst older people especially, dancing is not something that a man would, I think, even stop to think about. Yeah. But for me, it's been a fantastic uh, experience, and the, I really, it really struck me the bit about engagement, because there is something about going into a class where you have to leave everything else outside. Um, often there's a mirror and you have to chin up, smile, shake your maracas, do your thing. And it's kind of great fun and very involving. And um, yeah, I, I, I love it. Mm. And it, what, so tell me where your mind goes when you're in that place. In that place, it's, um, well, for me, it's, it's I've always love dancing actually since a kid when music came on i'd be prancing all over the place and um it's something about me feeling most comfortable with myself when i'm when i'm dancing so so you're connected to a part of yourself in play and dance yes, that doesn't happen absolutely. anywhere else nowhere else 
and interestingly, a lot of dance, especially contemporary stuff, there's a lot of play involved when choreographers are working up ideas and they ask you to play with all sorts of ideas, concepts and imagine you're a child, imagine you're this, that and the next. And it's fantastically interesting to, you know, involve your imagination like that. Mm. I think it's interesting as well. You said you loved playing as a ch uh, dancing as a, a child, and a kid, sometimes yeah. that's a way. If 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 anybody's struggling to think, what is my thing? Sometimes that can help. Is to think about before you were seven in those early years. What did you do freely until perhaps some ham-fisted adult came and and yeah. shut you down and said, I, I, "I'm you know hands up. I want to act," uh, and um, and and then was told that was showing off. So it sort of squashed that side of it, really, for me. Yeah, but the shooting voices of parents. You know, yeah, it's uh, yeah, terrifying. Yeah. I mean, it can also be wonderful, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our, our friends Thomas and Barbara, just on the chat, say, reminded me that they met salsa dancing. Uh, I think that was here in Cambridge. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, great, um, it's a great thing to be doing. We, we've had mixed um, experience with dancing, haven't we? Yeah. Well, I think it, for those of you that are in couples, it's we believe it's really important that you don't have to do everything together uh, when it comes to all sorts of things, but particularly with play. And if you've got very different interests and what makes you feel fully alive, like Stephen was saying so brilliantly there, if that's not the same as your partner, that doesn't matter. And I would like to think you can just take great delight in seeing your partner be fully alive. And so excited and, and content as well from having their chance to go and play and do their thing um, rather than any kind of point scoring that might be going on. Uh, Liz tells me that her mum took up flower arranging for the church in her 50s. She always wanted to be a florist, but that wasn't an option in her era. She was a full-time housework wife. wife. <laughs> it uh, really helped her to do uh, that once we were grown up. And that reminds me of your own mother, Judy. Mm. You, she took up uh, what, what I called retrospective flower arranging at, at her church because she would turn up during the service and in another room would arrange a bunch of flowers that would be ready for the next week but they'd be nicely dead by the time the next week came along so it was a kind of she would bring them in flower as the service arranging ended. in reverse yeah. yeah it was a kind of a dead flower arrangement uh, yeah. concept it's a new art form that hasn't really taken off yet but uh, i think it's got a lot of future to it yeah yeah, yeah. potentially so it's it's um is anything else that came out of your groups when you when you went into your rooms it'd be really nice to hear from you if anybody's waving a hand Tilly was there someone else who had their hand up Well Liz had her hand up Liz Curran uh, yes Liz you're unmuted Yeah I was just going to say what we talked about so I was in the same group as Stephen so he talked about his dance and Lucinda talked about cinema and I talked about going to gigs and all three of those took us away from what we normally do and just took us to a different place for a little while. Um, and for me also the gigs is a big intergenerational thing. I meet a whole bunch of people who are much younger than me and I, I love it because we're all there for the same reason. And it really, really, it's nice. It enables me to do that encourager thing, which I've talked about before. Yeah. So, what, what does being with younger people do for you? I mean, you, you're, you're encouraging them, but what's it doing for you, Liz? I feel accepted. And, yeah. Um, I have lots of different communities in my life, so that's become a community where I just feel valued for who I am. And yeah, I really like the fact that it doesn't feel like there's any barriers there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I sort of feel like, because I didn't have children, it, it feels like a really nice way to connect with people of, of that what? age that I didn't have those relationships in my yeah. own life. And I haven't, I've only got one niece. So, you know, I didn't, yeah. So it gave me something more than just going to listen to music, which was I only realised later what it was. Okay, so another dimension. Mm -hmm. So you're interested in music and tennis, but you got this other dimension by meeting the people who are involved in those worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 There's an interesting comment. Thank you, Liz, from Lucinda, who says uh, it might be that you might want to act or dance, that kind of thing, when you were young, seven. Uh, you may be more introverted when you're adult and not want to put yourself forward. So yeah. that's very interesting because we, you know, we, we know, I'm sure many of you know that um, 
something like public speaking is is one of the top three things that people are most terrified are afraid of, of yeah um yeah along with sharks and heights and things like that but actually standing up and speaking to a room full of people uh is it brings massive fear um one of our friends suzanne um went on a, took herself on a public speaking um uh, joined a group which basically practices public speaking yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that was an interesting thing to get herself out of that place. Yes. Um, Pushed her out of her comfort zone for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, I rem we were going to, uh, we forgot to do this. We were going to wear wigs. Oh, yeah. For this. Um, there's a lot of dressing up in this for house. The, for this but there's been a lot of play <laughs> happening here in the last. In lockdown. Uh, I think you probably saw in one of our emails a um, picture of us dressed. I, I dressed up as Captain Hornblower because I was reading a Hornblower book. And I thought, I've never worn an Admiral's hat. And I, I thought people standing on, you know, 18th century sailing boats with hats basically mm -hmm. like sails that is the most ridiculous design of hat isn't yeah. it the, the, yeah. the wind would just take it all the time well, it, and that was that was so each night we each friday night we've done a theme and that was come dressed as a book character and um i just rustled up some trillions at the last moment literally but it it's that thing of lockdown where it's it's making people get more creative with what they can find around them at home yeah uh, which and there's been a vibe a i don't think there's been a kind of a vibe in the street with our street whatsapp of people being more playful yeah they've gone to play yeah because yeah. of yeah i suppose anxiety frustration um limited yeah options i suppose that's kind yeah. of opened something else yeah. up out mm. yeah and i think it's interesting um there's varying degrees like we were saying what's active and what's passive and there's a lot of people watching an awful lot of telly uh in my role as a parenting coach i've been trying to get a lot of very anxious parents to a place of saying you know the world won't end if your kids end up watching a lot of telly during lockdown you know they they will find a way to catch up once the, once schools reopen but if that also helps you to just get completely entranced by something that's fine you know that this is not about judgment or anything like that it's what is what's really helps you just switch off relax and enjoy yourself um and you know the answer to that rather than anyone else trying to tell you so i'm going to give i you wonder if sorry i'm just interrupt i wonder if we should have a look at this oh just, yes uh, <laughs> oh well, yes we were going to show that this was <laughs> This is Kate's family decided, well, Kate, you tell us, what, what, what was, how did this come about? She gone. You there? No, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, so it was coming up to Maundy Thursday and uh, other friends had done some amazing recreations of masterpieces yeah. and we thought we would do the Last Supper. <laughs> so uh, we set it up, we looked hard at the picture and set it up and those are my two daughters, husband and I. We, we had some funny, um, when it was put uh, on social media, we had some people say, how many of you are in lockdown together? Yeah. Well, you've done it, you've comped the uh, pictures together very, very effectively. Yeah, that was my youngest daughter who, who did that very patiently and very well. So, really and I don't think at the Last Supper they ate raw potatoes. But no, that I think was all we had. Potatoes and, uh, and uh, uh, chapatis or something, I can see there. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tortillas and uh, tablecloths were heavily used. Yeah, but it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. To well, it looks that. like you took a lot of work on it because the the, um, the detail is particularly effective and the color. Yeah, so, with the color, we thought if we could just get the colors right, yeah. it would be okay. No, so well then, done. <laughs> that, gets, that gets an award, a play award. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, um, uh, we just want to mention Bev and Errol, who were our guests a couple of weeks back, and I think they're on the call tonight as well, because uh, you might know Errol drummed for 24 hours, oh. raising charitable uh, f funds for the NHS. Are charities. you there, Errol? Bev and Errol? I believe there? they've actually popped out to see they some family uh, from the oh, okay. okay. Well, since we last saw Errol and Bev on Talk this about thing, playing. They, Ber <laughs> Errol has got his drumming friends together, and he drummed with his friends for 10 days. They did 12-hour slots. Solid. Um, hours and yeah. uh, raised 30,000 quid. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So well done yeah. them. And yeah. Bev was uh, kind of helping manage all that and uh, coordinating, so well done yeah. to them. We're going to have to wind this up yeah. in, a, in a minute, but I want to say to you, in the chat, write what one action you might take from tonight with regard to play, please. That would be fun to do. <clears throat> um, and um, if you haven't subscribed, 
please subscribe to our mailing list. That would be great. Um, next week, what are we doing, Julie? Work. So that was the second most uh, voted for uh, of the branches in our tree. So we're going to be looking at work next week, what that means in Act 3. And um, we will be back same time, same place with the special guests. You wouldn't want an hour of just us. No, so. please, no, no. <laughs> And so I want to say big thank you to Kate and to Steve for yes, uh, thank you telling very us much. about their yeah. bits of their story. And, you know, we could have actually we could have gone on so much longer talking about this. I just love this topic, play, and I um, because I came from a kind of somewhat repressed um, religious background. Um, it was somewhat um, I can't blame them, but I didn't feel free, free to enough play. to play. I think, and yeah. that, that's um, yeah. That's probably a fairly common yes. story. In fact, somebody's put it really well there. In our group, play is an important way of affirming sense of self, which is fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So it's never too late. Uh, and um, we didn't get a chance to hear what you want to do in Act 3. Perhaps you're taking up something new. Perhaps lockdown has, has uh, generated an opportunity that hasn't been there so far. Write that in the chat. Yeah. And, uh, and send in your uh, thoughts and questions and comments to us as the week rolls on with what, um, what, you, what you're getting up to. And um, we'll be back next week with work. And keep dancing, <laughs> says Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye. Cheerio. Bye. Thanks for joining us. See ya.